வணக்கம் எல்லோருக்கும் என் பொங்கல் வாழ்த்துக்கள் தேங்க்ஸ் ஃபார் தி ஆர்கனைசஸ் ஃபார் ஹேவிங் மீ ஹியர் எ கப்பிள் ஆஃப் பர்சனல் நோட்ஸ் திஸ் இஸ் மை ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஃபார்மல் என்கேஜ்மெண்ட் வித் ஹிந்து ஆஃப்டர் தேர்ட்டி இயர்ஸ் I was a stringer for the newspaper from Jerusalem just before the Oslo agreement was signed. In JNU, if you are familiar with, it is not about left or right. It is not about right or wrong. It trains you to be the wind. So what I'm going to say may not be the popular opinion or the conventional one, but JNU trains you to be a free person. most of us try to be a weather cock that's a different story the title palestine is clear occupation is clear endless yes which means there is no end but where do you begin you can begin in 1967 since this audience is well informed i'm not going to bore you with details telegraphically you can begin in 1948 you can begin in 1917 you can begin in 1881 or you can begin in 637 when jerusalem became islamic if you are familiar with the region the haram al sharif the third holiest place of islam is on top of a pre islamic non islamic un islamic structure so therefore where you begin will tell you what you are looking for i leave it to you the most interesting thing about the entire conflict is the palestine question is back in the center if you look at in the last 30 years every time people thought palestine question is on the margins something happened somewhere the question is back in the center fold and we thought that the the abraham accord simply marginalize the palestinian cause and the arab countries are willing to differentiate between the support for the palestinians and their bilateral relations saudi arabia is almost closer to normalizing relation weeks before the conflict so hamas has put us back saying that the stability of the middle east i'm more comfortable with middle east than west asia because west asia is rather narrow Middle East is what the countries of the region describe themselves. It's my, I don't want to impose my description on them. The countries call themselves Middle East, so I use the word Middle East. So the countries in the Middle East, you can no longer have a stability without resolving the Palestinian question. But that also takes us a question. While Hamas put the issue on the table, is Hamas the troubleshooter? I think that is where the challenge will come. Well nobody can deny the Palestinian issue and the centrality of Hamas in leading the cause is Hamas the problem solver. We all know studying our national history the resistance and nation building are two different phases. We know that freedom struggle needed Gandhi. The India's rebuilding needed Nehru. imagine you are self the converse is the case you will have a disaster on your hand on both fronts then what kind of solution we are looking for i would say 3 to 1 today what you have is a relatively autonomous gaza strip under the hamas control a west bank under the palestinian authority and israel this is what the reality is Abbas became president in December 2004 after Yasser Arafat's passing. From 2004 until now, he has visited India six times as the president. He could not set foot in the Gaza Strip even once. Not because he did not want to go, he could not. So when you're talking about the Palestinians there is a de facto separation exists today on the ground. I can't think of any national liberation movements which has two sets of garments. I often ask myself if Israel cannot unite the Palestinians what will unite them? 
So therefore, the three-state solution is a reality today. But that is not the solution. There is no way you can have that. The second option is one-state solution, which is very popular in this part of the world. For me, the one-state solution is like having, oh, let's forget about Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan. Let's have a one great India. Is as good as that. If you look at history, seriously speaking, when was the last time a believer and a non-believer were equal? Go back to any time. I'm talking theory, I'm not talking practice. Because when you are in JNE, you know the difference between theory and practice. Stanley will tell us more seriously, we only have BMW socialists on the campus. So therefore, I'm not getting into the practical part of it. I'm talking the theoretical. When is the equality comes? It doesn't. So the realistic solution is two-state solution. It's difficult, yes. There are so many problems, yes. People have been trying and failing, yes. As long as Netanyahu is in the picture, there is no way you can realize. Agree all of them. I only take you to 622. If you remember, when Prophet started preaching a faith, he was stoned. That is why he went from Mecca to Medina. So resistance and opposition is integral. You don't fold your shop just because somebody is opposing. So however difficult it is, however challenging it is, the only viable option to the solution, to the problem, is a two-state solution. There is no other way out. And if you look at all of you, you will face enormous difficulties in your life. Just because the problem is that you fold your dream, you don't. You chase your dream. No matter how difficult it is, the same applies to here. No matter how difficult it is, two-state solution is a only viable, realistic option for these guys. No other way. Israel cannot exist without the Palestinians. Palestinians cannot exist without the Israelis. Sooner they recognize, the easier it will be. Who can take us there? You can criticize the United States, vilify them, demonstrate against them, condemn against them, carry a rally against them, editorialize them. Who can do a better job? India? China? Russia? European Union? Saudi Arabia? Qatar? Jordan? Or even Iran? Who can be the troubleshooter? No matter how difficult it is, how biased the United States is, today we don't have anyone other than the United States to do the heavy lifting. Others can contribute to that, influence the United States. If you think that X, Y, Z can do individually or collectively, tell the United States, back off, I will solve it. Find one person. That is a reality. So, if you want to change the world, first of all, you should have a reality as it is, without the blinkers. Accept as it is, then only you can change it. Today, we don't have it. But what this crisis has given us, you know, I'm going to draw a parallel between two events. One is the 9-11, the other is 1973. Both from a different angle. 9-11, we know that Israel was thinking it's a 9-11 moment, that's all everything. For me, it is also a 9-11 moment for the Ummah. If you look at a, a vast majority of Islamophobia in the West, was directly linked to 9-11. And today, you have the same situation, even though people are not saying it openly. Tell me which Quran says killing a woman is acceptable. Enlighten me. Kidnapping a woman, kidnapping a children, kidnapping an elderly. Tell me which Quran verses says, yes, it is acceptable, it is a cause. I don't think so. But today, majority are not ready to speak out because they think criticizing Hamas means criticizing the Palestinians, criticizing the Arabs, then criticizing the Hamas. So therefore, they are not ready. Sooner or later, you will have to come to face this. Similarly, 73. If you look at 73, the Arabs remember the beginning of the war, the Israelis also beginning of the war. Because Arabs are, we won, we surprised Israel. The Israelis thought, why were we surprised? 
So if you look at the discourse even today, the Arabs talk about the 6th of October, the Israelis also talk about 6th of October. They don't talk about how the war ended on 22nd, because that's a bad news. The capture of more territories did not satisfy Israeli. And similarly, the having the third army under Israeli control was not a pleasant thing for Egyptians to remember. So therefore, both of them, even today, talk about the beginning of the war. The same situation even today. The Palestinians will talk about the 7th October. The Israelis will also talk about 7th October. But now there is a, a ray of hope. The 73 war brought about a realization in Israel saying that war alone is not an option. Once the dust settles down, the same thing will come even today. Once a ceasefire comes, once everything falls in place, you need to recognize continuing the military option is not the long-term settlement to the problem. So the same thing, 73 led to the Camp David Agreement. I am putting my neck and say, once the dust settles down, the Israelis and the Palestinians will have to come to terms, yes, I don't like, I want more, but I can't ignore you all being my neighbor. That is the only way out. It will not be happening tomorrow. That's the long term. But since it's uh, journalism, let me put one more point. We need to have a greater honesty in looking at things. The Israelis will have to ask honestly, yes, we want to capture the hostages back. Didn't happen. Since the starting of the land offensive, more Israeli soldiers were killed than the number of hostages in Gaza Strip. So Israel will have to ask a question, is it a cost-benefit analysis? What was it? Is it a sensible policy? Similarly, Hamas and its supporters will have to ask a question. Yes, you surprised Israel. You carried out a military operation. You killed so many people. 24,000 Palestinian life. Sooner or later, you need to ask that question. Accountability is applicable to everyone, no exceptions. It may not happen officially, but we may also have to take sooner or later. The second thing would be, I would say that uh, there is a reference to river and the sea. When you say river and the sea, which means no Israel. And uh, will that constitute genocide? Is it a call for genocide? That's become very important now that South Africa is raising that flag. But when you say that, I want to destroy your state, how does the other person who are on the receiving end will feel? The final point is, you know, Palestinian rights are important. There is no two opinion on that. It's non-negotiable. But there are also rights of women. I think, you know, sooner or later, we need to ask a question. Is the Palestinian rights more important than rights of the Jewish women? You can say that they are more important. Absolutely, I have no problems with that. My only request will be, then don't celebrate 8th of March. Thank you very much.